Hey hey, welcome back everybody, I hope you've all been well. My name is Keelan and today we're going to be creating this robot animation loop. We're going to go from modeling this thing through to blocking out our animation, playing with the curves a little bit to make the animation nice and smooth before we go ahead and render this out. So as always, if that sounds like fun to you, start a blender and let's jump on into the video. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've all been well. I know it's been a minute since we've made a tutorial on the channel, but I'm finally settled in my new home. And um, yeah, hopefully we've got lots of time now to make some tutorials. But if you're new around here, my name's Keelan. I'm a web developer by day, but in the evenings, I like to do a 3D art and I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a 3D generalist. So uh, yeah, you'll catch me on YouTube from time to time. So feel free to hit that subscribe button if you're interested in this type of content. But um, before we jump in today, just a couple of notes. So keep your eye on the bottom left down here. You'll see my mouse clicks and my keyboard inputs to sort of guide you as we go along. And it's probably good to have just a basic idea of how to use the interface, such as how to orbit in the viewport and how to jump between the different views on the fly, you know, whether or not you want to use the tilde key or, you know, some of the gizmos up here, whatever your preference is, just have a basic idea about that. But nonetheless, I'll try my best to narrate as I go along. So uh, even if this is your first time, hopefully you should be able to follow along pretty well. But today we're going to go ahead and start with the base of our robot. And we're going to be using good old fashioned subsurface modeling. Uh, but before I do, let's go ahead and delete this starting light. I'm not going to make use of that. And I am going to keep the camera because I do like the default angle we have going on here. And I will be making use of that later. But what we can do in the meantime is come up to camera and just click the little icon to hide this for now. So let's go ahead and do some subsurface modeling on this thing. And generally, all that consists of is coming into our modifiers and we're going to add in a subdivision surface modifier. And here we are now. So this is going to start rounding the shape for us. And I'm going to go ahead and increase my viewport subdivisions to two and my render to three. So now this is giving us some extra geometry. And what I'm going to do now is tab into edit mode. And we're going to add some extra geometry in here to give it some shape. So let's just do control R to get up our loop cut tool. I'm going to click and drag this up to about here. Now I want this to be open at the top. So let's come to here and select faces. I'm going to select the stop face, press X to delete and let's delete the face. And just like that, we've got our nice bucket shape going on, which is going to be the base to our robot here today. But now I want to add a little bit of thickness to this thing. So let's for now just close up our subdivision surface modifier. And we're going to go ahead and add in a solidify modifier. Now we can go ahead and increase our thickness and you can hold shift while you're doing this. And that's going to give us a bit more of a smooth, gradual motion. And then close that up because I think that looks pretty good to me. And on top of this, once again, we're going to use another modifier, which is going to be the bevel modifier. Now, this is a bit uh, much as the default. So I'm going to increase my segments to something like four. And then slowly reduce my amount till I've just got a little bit of the edge here that is being beveled. Something like that, I think looks pretty good to me. And at this point, if you did want your robot to be even smoother because right now we do have these sharp edges. But um, what you could do to resolve this is come back into our subdivision surface modifier and just increase your loop cuts once again, your subdivisions rather. Uh, just being aware that the more you subdivide, the more stress that will put on your computer. So, you know, all of our computers vary in terms of their strength. So, I'm going to keep mine at, some, at something like that, but by all means, feel free to keep yours lower. And you could even go for a low poly appearance if you wanted with this. You know, I, what, what I'd like to see is people to really customize their robot and make it their own. So by all means, you know, customize this and experiment. 
but something like that is going to do for me. And then I'm going to right click and shade smooth this. So we've got this nice smoothed over shape. And I just, I'm just want to, I just want to go ahead and separate this section so that we have a little bit of a, you know, just a little bit of detail essentially. So I'm going to jump into front view and then I'm going to tab into edit mode. Right now you can see we've got, still got this square shape going on, but let's go ahead and select this top section and we can do this by holding alt and if we click on this vertical edge this is going to select that entire loop for us and now i want to separate this so it's a separate piece i hope we can do that by pressing p and then go into separate selection and if i tab back into object mode now you can see we have this separate piece which is being beveled and solidified on its own because it's going to inherit the modifiers that were existing on this shape and just like that we've got a little bit of extra detail but before we carry on <clears throat> let me just take a little bit of my water here because my goodness warming up the throat it's been a while since we've done any, any of these uh <laughs> voiceovers my goodness my goodness how are we doing anyway leave a comment below let me know if you're enjoying hopefully um this isn't too confusing for you but um, all right, so the next thing I think we want to do, because I'm pretty happy with the base of the robot here, let's go ahead and add in the head. And all I've done for this is literally Shift A, and in the meshes, let's go ahead and add in a UV sphere. I'm going to scale this down with S, so just press S to scale, and then G to move, and Z to lock this to the Z axis. And I'm going to adjust my scale with S, until I get something I like. And then just like the other pieces, we can right click and shade smooth. And that looks pretty good to me. I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. And now let's do a little bit of parenting. So I'm going to shift, uh, sorry, not shift. I'm going to click and drag here. And if the box select tool isn't on by default for you, it normally is for me, but uh, it might not be for you. You can come up to here, click and hold this down and use the select box tool that's generally my preference so click and drag this here and then shift click on the body control p for parent and i'm just going to select parent to object keep transform and now whenever i move the body the other pieces are going to come along too perfect so let's just press g to, to move this z to lock to the z axis and i'm going to bring this up here a little bit because now i want to add in the wheel section so I'm going to go ahead and add in a plane here for this bit. So let's do shift a mesh and a plane. And then I'm going to, I want to rotate this 90 degrees. So let's do R to rotate X to lock this to the X axis and then nine zero enter for a 90 degree rotation there. Perfect. Now in front view, let's go ahead and scale this down. Then S and Z to scale this on the Z axis. And I'm just going to bring this up to something like this. Now I want to round this section over just to be a bit of a, I don't know, uh, just a metal section, which is going to attach to the wheel. I'm sort of making this up as I go along here. <laughs> so let's initially, we do want to reset the scalar values on this because whenever you scale it in object mode like this, if I press N to open up the end menu here, the uh, Blender has these scale values. And if these aren't all equal, uh, when we come to bevel certain aspects, the bevel's not going to be quite right. So what we can do is press Control A and apply a scale, and that's going to nicely reset those variables for us. So I can press N to close that. And what we're going to do now is bevel these corners. So let's tab into edit mode. And in this case, we're working with a plane, so we need to press 1 or come up here and select vertices. And I'm going to box select both of these. And now you may think we can press Ctrl B to bevel, but because these are vertices, we actually have to press Ctrl Shift B to bevel. And we can scroll our mouse wheel up a couple of times to get a nice smooth corner here or a you know smooth bevel. And you can overdo it like this, but if you press C, you can actually clamp this. But I'm not going to go that far anyway. I think something about here will be perfect. Just like that. Now tab back into object mode and let's rotate this 
on the Z axis, so R to rotate, Z to lock it at the Z axis, and then 90 to rotate this 90 degrees. Something like that. But of course, it's a little bit thin, and I'm sure you remember already. How do we add thickness? In this case, I'm going to once again use a solidify modifier. I'm keeping my offset at minus one, and I'm going to increase my thickness. Ooh. Sorry, deep breath, losing my breath here. <laughs> Need to breathe when I speak. Ah, right, so I think something like that will do for the thickness. And once again, I think I'm going to close this up and add a bevel modifier. I'm sure you don't need me to narrate these bits now, because I'm sure you're an absolute pro at this by now. Bring this down, and then lastly, right-click Shade Smooth. Okay, coolio. Now I want some sort of cylinder section here. So Shift A, Mesh, Cylinder. Let's scale this down. G and Z to bring this up on the Z axis. And then I think I'm going to scale this down on the Z axis, so S. And then Z to lock this to the Z axis on the scaling. And I think this, is this a little bit too big? This is kind of preference at this point. No, I think I'm just going to make my cylinder bigger. Bring it up. And then Control A to reset our scale first. And then add a bevel modifier. Increasing my segments once again. And reducing the bevel amount. And Shade Smooth. And this is going to be some sort of turny section pivot point. I swear there's method in this. <laughs> and then lastly, I just want a cylinder going across here. And then a cylinder again for a final wheel. So let's do Shift A, Mesh, Cylinder. Scaling this down. And then R, 90 degrees to rotate this 90 degrees. And in this case, because I'm locked in front view, this is just going to rotate you know, perfectly from this angle. And then S and X to scale this out on the X axis. S to scale it down as a whole. And just moving this into place. And I think what I can do here is go ahead and duplicate this to use the cylinder again for a wheel. So let's Shift D to duplicate. Right click to leave that in place. Then I'm going to go ahead and press S and X to scale this on the X axis. And then S to scale this up as a whole until we get a big wheel shape, something like that. S and X. How does that look? Something like that, kind of looking interesting. But what we can do now is go ahead and reset the scale values on these ones again. I'm going to highlight them both at the same time for this. Control A, apply a scale. And then I'm going to add one more bevel modifier to each of these. Adjusted my values, having this one a bit more rounded for a wheel. And same with this one. Right click shade smooth. And I want one more cylinder here, so I'm going to duplicate the wheel. Right click to leave it in place. S to scale down. And then S and X to scale this out on the X axis. Control A to reset that scale again. Adjust in my bevel. And I think we're looking pretty good for the basis of this robot. And of course, in this case, my robot is very basic. But by all means, feel free to add as much detail as you like. You know, I don't know what you guys are into, but if you wanted to put some sort of big robot arms on this thing, some crazy guns, I don't know, whatever you kids are into these days, <laughs> go ahead and, uh, you know, customize it, make it your own. And uh, don't forget to send in my way so I can check with your work um, at KeelanJohn underscore on Instagram and KeelanJohn on Twitter. So KeelanJohn everywhere, you know, all over the place. Send it my way. But in this case, I'm pretty satisfied with this robot for the purpose of this tutorial. But right now, I need to do a little bit of parenting so that when I move the body, when it comes to animate, everything comes along with it. So we can just once again, box select all the bits down here that we made, shift click on the body, then control P, keep transform. Perfect. So now if I move this guy, just like that, everything comes along with it. And I'm just going to make sure that my wheel sits nicely on this X axis line here. Doesn't need to be exact, just close enough. 
So one more thing then, the last final hurdle before we move on to animation is I want to change the pivot point on a robot. So when I rotate him like this or from the side is probably better like this, I want him to rotate around the wheel as if the wheel is the, you know, this, well, the pivot point, as I said. So easy and quick way to do that is taking advantage of the 3D cursor here. I'm going to select my wheel and we can use shift S to move our 3D cursor to different areas. In this case, I want to move the 3D cursor to the current selected object, just like that. And now with the 3D cursor here, I can select the body. And if we come up to object, I can change the origin point with set origin. And you've got a variety of options. But in this case, I want to set it to the 3D cursor. So I'm going to click this and now you can see our pivot point for the body is this little orange dot down here and now it's at the wheel. So if we look at it from the side, when I rotate this guy, kind of looks like he's rotating around this axis point, right? Which is going to come in very handy when it comes to animating. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for now though. Oh, and before we actually move on to the camera bit, I realized that we are, <laughs> we're on our way to like 50k subs which is crazy. I can't believe this that many of you now, you know, it's almost hard to celebrate milestones because between work and then coming back to YouTube and seeing the numbers going up, I'm like, wow, there's like so many of you now. So I was thinking maybe when we hit 50 K, we could do a bit of a Q and A stream again. So just in case you guys have any sort of questions, uh, or you just want to know a bit about me, let me know below. And if you, if you'd be interested in that and I'll be sure to arrange it, but, uh, anyway, you're amazing. Thanks for hitting that subscribe button. But anyway, um, let's move on to the camera aspect, right? So we did keep the default camera. So if we come up here and re-enable it and now let's see what we're working with. So you could click the camera icon here to jump into your camera or in my case, I tend to use the tilde key and I'm just going to go to view camera. Okay. So you can see by default, we get this 1920 by 1080 resolution. And I'm going to adjust this in our output properties. And I'm going to change this to 1080 by 1080, which is, you know, the general squareness for say Instagram. But by all means, if you are a bit of a TikTok kind of person, you could go for 1080 by 1920. You know, you got your TikTok shape going on here. Oh, and this is also, uh, what is this? This is also like YouTube shorts, if I'm not mistaken, uh, reels, you know, all those sort of things. But anyway, let's go back to 1080 by 1080. Perfecto. And I'm going to click on my camera here. And if we go into object it properties on the camera. I think what I'm going to do initially is scale my robot down a little bit. Just so he's a little bit smaller. And I'm also going to then increase the focal length of my camera to something like 70. Of course, your numbers will vary depending on the scale of your object and such. But by all means, you know, make this your own tinker and have a little play around because experimentation is part of the fun so don't don't be scared you've got this but anyway um i want this robot to be nice and centered so i'm going to shift the y-axis here so he's relatively in the center i'm just eyeballing this there's no uh actual you know method that i'm using just trying to figure this out trying to you know this thing called life <laughs> and now i want to add a bit of a backdrop ready to do some animation. So initially let's reset the 3D cursor back to the point, uh, the center of the world. So we can do that with shift S cursor to world origin. And then we can do shift A mesh plane. And then I'm just going to do S to scale. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> S to scale this up. And I'm going to hold shift while I do this. And essentially I'm just going to keep scaling this up until it covers the camera. It gives us a little bit of a backdrop to work with while we animate this. Okay, so animation time. This is where it can get a little bit exciting. You know, if you've never done animation before, don't worry. I'll try my best to, um, you know, simplify this and make it as clear as possible. 
Uh, but in the default screen here, what we're going to do, you've got this timeline, which we have on by default. We're going to bring this up slightly by clicking on the line here. Just bringing this up. And I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse click just to keep this centered. And if I zoom out here, you can use your middle mouse button, zoom in and out, click with the middle mouse button left and right. And essentially, I think I'm going to do one to 90 frames. So that's going to be the extent of our animation loop here. And we can hold control and middle mouse click to drag this out. So it's nice and wide for us to work with. And OK, so what is the game plan here? So you can do whatever you want, of course, as always. If you wanted lasers coming in here and doing some crazy stuff, you, hey, have the time of your life, no, no judgment. But, um, but I'm going to uh, simply have the robot sit in here. He's going to enter the seat, do a little spin to face this direction, and then drive out the scene. And then rinse and repeat. It's going to loop once again. So it's going to be nice and simple. So initially, uh, we have our timeline here. And I think when it gets to frame 30, I want my robot here exactly where he is now. So let's just do I, which is going to let us insert a keyframe. And I'm going to be using the location and rotation for the body here. So make sure you are selecting the body for this or the main base of the robot. And then if we go back to frame one with the body selected, let's press G to move this guy. Y to lock this to the Y axis. And I think I'm going to place mine slightly in the frame about here. And then once again, I to insert a keyframe, location and rotation. And at this point, we already have a little bit of motion going on. So if you was to play this, you could see we've got the beginnings of our animation. Nothing too exciting yet, I know. And we will be adding color and such a little bit later. But for now, let's keep this blocked out in our grayed out view here. But when it reaches frame 30, I think I want him to spend another 30 frames to turn 90 degrees. So at frame 60, with the body selected, let's press R to rotate, Z to lock this to the Z axis, and just type 90, enter. And once again, I to insert a keyframe, location and rotation. Perfect, so now he enters the scene, turns, and he's going to drive out the scene so we can loop at frame 90. So with it selected now, G, X to lock the, Z, uh, the X axis, bring him right out of the scene, and then I, location and rotation. Now let's see how this looks. So if I play it, All right, that's looking pretty cool. But of course, we do need this to loop. And right now, we have this robot that's here. And at frame 90, when we go back to the beginning, he's sort of teleporting in. So to rectify this, what we're actually going to do is if I go ahead and hide the ground plane for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the entirety of my robot. Well, probably best to do this outside of the camera view. I'm going to highlight the entirety of my robot and we can do shift D to duplicate and right click to leave exactly where he is, where he is. So right now we have two robots. Problem is they share the exact same keyframes. So we don't know which one is which, and we probably should come up here and rename these. So right now we've got cube and cube Zuzu two. I want to double click on this and just call this robot one. I call this one robot. Two. Now, essentially, what I want to happen is at frame 60, where this robot moves out of the scene, I want another robot, kind of like a conveyor belt, to move into the scene, perfectly matching this frame here, so that we won't see when it loops. So, what we can actually do is if I go back to frame 1, and select robot two up here. At this point, it's probably easier to select robot two up here. And all I'm gonna do is delete these three keyframes. So we're gonna highlight these, X, delete frames. And now we've got this one frame where he's at this point. And I'm gonna drag this right down to 90. So now if I move this along, you can see we now have 
a robot who's perfectly in place, ready for that loop. But at frame 60, I want him completely out of the scene. So I'm going to, at frame 60, G, Y, move him over here, and then I, location and rotation. And just like that, this should now perfectly loop. Okay, that looks pretty good. Of course, we can see the robot sort of teleporting here. But you have to remember that all we're going to see when we render this is what's inside our frame. Okay, final hurdle, ladies and gentlemen, final hurdle. We are almost there. So let's just go ahead and re-enable the ground. And for organizational sake, let's rename this to ground if I can spell. And what we're going to do now is we are officially almost done with our animation. But what I want to do is briefly and only, you know, the tiniest amount, uh, I want to tinker with the um, animation curves for this. Because right now he's very stiff, very rigid. And in reality, he probably wouldn't, you know, move in this sort of fashion. So what I want is for this guy to sort of lean forward as he when he begins his motion. So what we're going to do for that is tinker with the graph editor. So what we can do is we no longer need to use the timeline here. So in our editor options here, if we click this, we got lots of different editor types, but the one we're going to be looking at now is the graph editor. And of course, this could look a bit confusing at first, but all this is, is a visual representation uh, in graph form of the motion that's going on with this object. And all we want to look at is the x-axis. So let's, let's make this a bit simpler. We can zoom out. But all I want to do is jump into my drop down here for this object. And we're going to hide everything except for the x-axis. So hide this. All of these except for the x Euler rotation. And what you'll notice if I zoom in here. And just a quick overview actually of how you can control this. You can click and drag with your middle mouse button, zoom in and out with it, and then also hold control and click your middle mouse button to drag this left and right to zoom in horizontally and up and down to zoom in vertically. But once you're familiar with how that works, what we're going to do is you can see we've got these little black dots, which are just the keyframes that we keyed out earlier. But what I want to do is adjust the X rotation and give it a little bit of a curve so he has that nice leaning motion. So when I, so for example, let's click on our starting frame and you can see we have these little handles now on our frame. And if I just drag this one up to create a bit of a curve on the X axis, our robot should now lean forward or rotate on the x-axis and then come back to that point. So let's, let's have a little look. Nice. So we get that little leaning forward motion, which just adds a little bit of, you know, an extra little bit of something to the animation. And of course, you can make this as exaggerated as you like. Something like that, I think, looks pretty cool. Nice. I like that. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool. Uh, but um, now let's just go ahead and tinker with the other ones too. So I think he's going to do it here. Then he's going to rotate slowly. And then once again, I want to do the same thing. And go ahead and lean over here. Of course, we do get this aspect where because of the current handle type, it is trying to keep these equal on both sides. But what we can do is hide this, right click, and change the handle type to free. And now we can do these independently. And I'm just going to make this side a little less exaggerated. Now let's take a look at what this looks like. Something like that. I think this is a little bit quick for my liking. So let's watch it one more time. Okay, I think something like that will do for the sake of this tutorial. But just like everything in my tutorials, feel free to customize and tinker with these as much as you like. And just, you know, just have a good time and experiment because that's the whole point of these tutorials. But I think that will do. We've got this perfect loop going on. We've tinkered with the animation curves. Now let's go ahead 
add some materials okay so i'm just going to shrink this back down now and what we're going to do i'm going to go ahead and jump on over into my rendered view and what you'll notice is everything is really dark right now because we have no lights in the scene and to make doing the lighting here very quick and simple i'm actually going to use a hdri i'll leave a link below to hdri haven um, it's essentially a high resolution image that Blender can use to generate some really natural lighting. So once you've downloaded that, if we come into our world properties, right now we've got this default color background, but I'm going to click on this dot for the color and change this to an environment texture. <laughs> right now we've got this bright pink color, which essentially means Blender has no idea what it is you're trying to use for HDRI right now. Uh, so what we'll need to do is open this up and wherever you've saved your HDRIs, go ahead and add one of these in. I think I'm just going to go ahead and use ooh, spot for choice. What about Epping Forest? Okay, that looks pretty cool. Everything is nice and bright. I think that's looking okay. And let's go ahead now and start adding some color to these guys. So I think if we click on one of these guys here, Probably hard to see in this lighting, actually. <laughs> We're going to click on this one. And in our materials properties, right now I've got this default material. But say you didn't, you might yours might look like this. Just click New. And then let's choose our base color. And I'm going to go for a bit of a pinky purpley for this robot. And in my case, I'm also going to up my roughness to get a little bit more of that matte look to the, to the design. And I think I'm going to do one for the ground too. So it's essentially a case of going through all your different objects here, creating a new material, and adding in something that you like. And as a quick tip, because these two robots will need to look the exact same, you can actually click on the parts that are pale or a lacking material, hold shift and click them all. Then lastly, click on this one here. Do control L and we can link the materials. Just a quick and easy way to do that. And now let's do another one for the head. I'm going to make this a bit of a bluey purple. Make it quite dark. Something like that. And maybe make this one a little bit more reflective. And once again, I'm going to click this one. Shift click here. Control L and link those materials. Okay, looking cool. And then we've got some bits down here. I think I'm just going to give these a bit more of a metallic texture. So in my base color, I'm going to tint this into the blue ever so slightly and just bring up my metallic just so there's a slight shine to this. Something like that. And if you wanted to make this a bit shinier, by all means. But I like to keep mine a little bit more matte and rough just so they don't reflect as much light. And once again, I'm going to shift click a bunch of these parts. And then lastly, click on this one, control L and link that material to the rest of them. And then let's do one more for the wheel. And it's probably wise for the sake of this tutorial. I haven't bothered, but you can name all these materials too. So in this case, I should name that wheel. But, uh, you know, I guess I've been lazy today. And then for the base color of this, let's just make this something like a blue, maybe. And I'm going to make this like a shiny wheel. And I duplicate this one over once again with Control L, link materials. And we jump back into a camera view. We can now tinker with our render settings to make this look nice and pretty. So inside here, render properties. And you've got multiple options, really. I'll probably be rendering in cycles, but EV is going to look just as nice. So we can, so in EV, let's go ahead and enable ambient occlusion. And you can tinker with your shadow distance here. That's really going to give you those nice little shaded areas. Then include bloom for that little bit of glow. Screen space reflections, which works really well on metallic objects, something like that. And film, we can turn on transparent because we don't really need to see the background. We just need the lighting aspect. And 
and in color management. Generally, these days I tend to go for filmic with a medium high contrast look. And then lastly, let's use curves and in our curves. Generally, I tend to put one dot at my midpoints to keep those midtones there and then drop my dark slightly and raise my lights slightly. But something like that, I think looks pretty nice. And of course, if you're going to render in cycles, make sure that you are using your GPU if you have one. I'm going to enable denoising here. And I think that's looking pretty nice. I like that. That's looking pretty good. And what we can also do in cycles, another quick tip, if you press control B, you can click and drag over the camera area to only render this section of the view. So that way it should go a little bit quicker for you. And if you are going with cycles, um, so what I tend to go with, it tends to vary, but in, in terms of my render, I tend to keep mine quite low, at around 200 say, uh, and in the viewport, this was us up to you just for the preview. But 200 is fine, and I find if you can, optics denoising is pretty good. But the denoising in Blend is pretty good these days. So um, something like that should be pretty good and give you a nice render result when the time comes. But now let's go ahead and take a quick look at our output properties. And this is going to be how we decide, you know, the format that it's going to be rendered in and, and such. So output, of course, where you want it to go is completely up to you. Right now, Blender does this, does this a lot and goes to temp, but you can choose any way you want to save this in your files. So I'm just going to leave it in temp for now. And in terms of our output format, personally, I tend to use PNG and then re render this as an image sequence. But for ease of use for you today, I think what we'll do is go into file format uh, we're going to use FMPEG, FMPEG video, which is, you know, like MP4 and th those sort of things. So then into encoding. And inside the container, we can use MP4. And the rest of the sentence we can leave as they are. So now if you're ready and you're feeling good, feeling good about your design, we can just go ahead and go to render and render animation and we'll come back when this is done. And just like that, guys, we come to the end of another tutorial. And if you did enjoy today, go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know that you made it to the end of this tutorial. But on that note, my name is Keelan. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one.